This is the GT630. It was released back in May 2012 and was considered a mid-range graphics card. Is this graphics card still usable in 2024? And are we still able to play some games and have everyday use? Let's find out. This graphics card came with one gigabyte of memory. It runs on DDR3 and it only features 96 cores. It's running on the GF108 processor and has a GPU clock of 810 megahertz with a shader clock of 1600 megahertz. And this is running at the 128-bit memory bus. The generation of this graphics card was the G4600, and this generation's just an old generation. I'm not really expecting much out of it, to be honest. Now the newer processors probably have better integrated graphics than this graphics card, honestly. So it would not be worth it, but if you are looking for an emergency graphics card, or if you didn't have a graphics card in the first place and you just stumbled across this or you were given this. Anyways, let's test it. The test bench that we will be using today consists of an i7-2600, 16GB of DDR3 RAM, as well as a 256GB SSD. Basic web browsing and YouTube works perfectly fine without a single frame dropping, without any stutters or loading errors. We got an error from Fortnite saying that we do not have the recommended drivers. This is going to be a fun day. I'm expecting missing textures and the worst outcome. To my surprise, Fortnite actually loaded and got me into a game. We are playing at 720p, performance mode, low settings, but I do have the 3D resolution at 100%. We are getting between 60 and 30 FPS with an average of 51 and a minimum of only 26. I just played Fortnite on the Switch the other day and I would honestly compare this to the handheld mode on the Switch because that runs at 720p. Besides that, I mean, this ran perfectly fine. Maybe a couple stutters here and there, but I had no issues whatsoever. The next game that we have up is Fallout 4 running at 720p and the lowest settings. I did try to turn some of them up, but I just didn't want to mess with it too much. I just wanted to play. The next gen update came out recently and I am loving this. I've already put like 30 hours into Fallout 4 into my personal account. It's amazing, I'm loving it. I've loved this game since I was a kid and I've been playing it since it came out, but it's running pretty well, averaging 33, pretty similar to Xbox One slash PS4 performance, because I know they run at 720p as well, but I'm pretty sure they have mixtures of low and medium settings. And I probably could honestly do some low and medium settings tinkering to where I could get it running pretty similar to the Xbox and PS4 version. But besides that, I mean, obviously the long loading times, that's an issue with the next gen update. And there is some stutters, I mean, this is a one gigabyte graphics card. I'm even surprised that this game ran. The next game that we have up is CSGO 2, running at 720p low settings. As you can see, it's a very common theme for all of these games to be running at 720p. Don't expect any 1080p or even 4K gaming with this. This graphic card is over a decade old and only has one gigabyte of virtual memory. So, I mean, do not expect stuff like that. But overall, this ran all right. It only maxed out at 60 FPS, but we got an average of 37. That is not playable for like competitive play or anything, but if you're just wanting to kick back and this is the only thing you have, I mean, you can technically play CSGO with your friends. Now this version of GTA 5, I haven't seen it in a long time because this is so similar to the PS3 and Xbox 360 versions. I had to really lower all the settings to normal, which is basically the lowest. Maybe the textures are on medium, but besides that, all the sliders are on zero, no population density, nothing like that. It's running okay, I mean, it's very playable. There was one cutscene that just dropped the FPS so low for whatever reason, but besides that, which, that gave us our low of 16, besides that one, I mean, I didn't see any big stutters or anything, like, it was very playable, and if you wanted to match, like, Xbox One and PS4, I think if you turn it to 1080p and cap it at like 30 fps you might be able to have a playable experience the last game that i saved for today is minecraft 1.20 this is the newest version of minecraft and i'm running it with simply optifine just to give it the best performance we are averaging 108 fps and only dipping down to a minimum of 73. i put an fps cap of 120 fps just so it wouldn't max out crazy and get really stuttery and i think this turned out really well i mean this is very playable and you might even be able to play with some light mods, honestly. This was also the only modern title that I am able to play at 1080p. I mean, hey, Minecraft can pretty much run on anything. I really expected to be able to play this at 1080p, but that's just something, you know? Overall, 
I think that this graphics card could definitely pass by as an everyday use graphics card. Definitely not gaming. You'll definitely need another one. But if you're wanting an extra graphics card because you want more monitors, this could be a good option as well as being able to just do everyday school or work. It's not bad. Like I said, it's not good for gaming, but it's not bad. I'm going to be editing this video on this computer as well just to show that it's not that bad. But I only record in 1080p as of right now, so it's not that intensive on it. I used to be able to do this on my laptop with half a gigabyte of VRAM, so it shouldn't be too bad. I'll definitely use this graphics card for like an older style build, maybe, maybe entry level. I don't even know if it could pass by as entry level. That's a thing. So anyways, that's all I have for you guys today. I hope you liked this video. If you did, hit the like button down below and subscribe if you're new. I'll see you guys next week.